Good afternoon. Uh, welcome back to our series of lessons for advanced Excel. So again, this is your teacher, uh, Mr. Orvin. So for today, um, I'm assuming that you have already watched the videos and you already understood our lesson number three, the introduction to charts or the review of the basics of the charts. So right now we're going to go for the other samples of charts or uh, we call it advanced charts in other words. So I will share to you the PowerPoint presentation that I uploaded in the Moodle. So please download that and try to follow uh, whenever you watch this. So I'm going to share the PowerPoint. OK, so I'm not uh, uh, uploading this PowerPoint to uh, the actual lessons or the video of this lessons because um, I need you to bear with me because I'm going to uh, switch back and forth to the Excel file and to this uh, PowerPoint. OK, so let's start. So uh, other samples of charts. Next slide. Uh, so what we're going to discuss are the different charts that we call advanced, like butterfly chart, minimalist chart, line chart with arrow, spark line, and inline chart. So butterfly chart and the minimalist chart is going to have uh, the concept or the same concept, which is we just uh, adjust or tweak the characteristics or uh, the font, the form, non, sorry, not the font, the format of uh, each part of the graph. So, for example, you have a bar there. You want to make it uh, wider or smaller. You want to change the gap. This is what we're going to, the gap in between the bars. This is what we're going to do with the butterfly chart and the minimalist chart. So the first chart that we're going to discuss is the butterfly chart. So let's proceed to the next. The part, butterfly chart uh, is a very nice visualization technique for comparing two data series side by side. So you can see here in our example, okay, this is the actual chart. You can see it's called the poll results. When you say poll, like you're asking question which is answerable by you yes or no or true or false so two possible questions so let's say you ask the question to 1000 people that's the example that i have here you can use 100 people 500 500 uh, um, respondents we call those who answered the the poll as respondents uh, uh, so here the example the green uh, part is those who answered yes and the red part are those who answered no. So in between, there's a gap for those bars. And then we just leave it this as the number of the question. Question 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. OK, so we use this chart. It's a special kind of chart, advanced chart, that we you can uh, use to see how one series compared to others uh, for a given data point in one glance. So when you see this butterfly chart, uh, if you're not from here, what a butterfly is, you can search it in Google. I think you, 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 are, you are familiar. So it is an, uh, an insect uh, that has two colorful wings. Okay, so let's proceed to the next. Okay, the butterfly chart will start with your table for the number of respondents for the answers to the question of the poll. Okay, so for example, your uh, your poll is answerable by uh, yes or no. So you have sent this to 1,000 people, 364 of the question number one answered yes and 624 answered no. So, and so on and so forth. Okay, you have to have that data initially. So if I'm going to give this to you, 
uh, as an exam. So I have to give you a data which looks like this. Okay. So of course there are possibilities of um, uh, some variance to this kind of table, but that's the concept. Questions, the answer yes or the answer no, or another type of question is true or false. The answer is true, the answer is false, okay? So one column is true and the column is false. So this is the example of the chart. So what this slide is showing you is this is the first step. You have this data and you have to convert this to this table, okay? So what's the, the similarity or what's, uh, how do we convert? The, the, the column for the question is here, the column for the yes is here, and the column for the no is here. They are just the same. So ultimately, you're just going to insert a table for 1000 minus yes, gap, oh sorry, you have to insert a column on the table and a gap column and the 1000 minus no. Okay, so I'm not going, uh, even though I, uh, uh, I will tell you that you can arrange this, let's say the yes will be here, and then the no is interchanged. You can arrange it like that, so it depends on you. But if you do that, of course, the 1000 minus no must be here, and the 1000 minus yes will be here. So when you interchange, the gap should always be at the middle, okay? The gap should always be at the middle. Okay, but when you interchange, make sure that 1000 minus no is always near or next to the no column. 1000 no column, no column. 1000 yes column, yes column. Okay, I hope you can follow. Let's go to the next slide. Okay, so the next slide is actually the different task or the different steps on how to do this, but we don't take this verbatim or word for word, okay? So I'm going to show you how we can achieve this, okay? So that when we create a chart for the previous table that we produce, okay? Then we can have the butterfly chart. Okay, so let's continue. I will shift uh, slide. I will share to you now my Excel um, file. So first, you just have to create or uh, open a new workbook, a blank workbook. This is where we're going to start. Okay, so I have shown you on the previous uh, on the slides on the PowerPoint presentation. Okay, and I want you to copy the original table. So on slide number four, you have the original table from the left. So this is what I'm going to show you here. either match the destination formatting or keep source formatting. I will just elect for the match destination formatting. Okay, I will just uh, a little bit fix this so that it will be easier. So this is the original table. So again, how did I get this table? You go to the PowerPoint presentation that I was showing you earlier and then copy the content of that original table, the small table with only the questions yes and no. So you copy that. So I will copy that to another column uh, just to uh, show you where it originally came from and how the output will look like. Okay. Oops. I'm going to make this. Okay. So I need to insert a column here. Okay. I need to insert another column here and this will be the last column. So the first column that inserted is called 1000 minus yes. This, the, uh, the column in between yes and no is the gap. 
and this last column will be 1000 minus no. So this is the name of the column that, that I added. But what is important here, okay, on this columns is the values or are the values. So 1000 minus yes is just the number that you subtract uh, the, or yes, the number, uh, what do you call it? Let me just show you. I'm just going to make it bigger. Um, okay. So 1000 minus yes is our number that you subtracted from 1000. Okay. Or the, 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 the number, the result when you subtracted the yes answer or the yes respondents from 1000. So 1000 minus this set, H2. Okay, so the answer is 636. How do we get this? 1000 minus 364. So now why 1000? Okay, 1000 is the assumption of the number of um, uh, the number of respondents. Why did I? How did I get this? I didn't. I, I'm not. I didn't. I just got this results from. Uh, some source, okay? But the idea is that if you're going to see the respondents for each question, 364 to 624, uh, plus 624 is 988. So this is true with this, and this it's true for all the questions. So you add, for example, 393 plus 549, okay? So that's how much? More than 900 again. Okay, so less than 1,000, more than 900. So I assume that the uh, the respondents or the number of questions uh, questionnaires that I gave to the people are 1,000. Maybe only few didn't answer the question. That's why we get this. Not exactly 1,000. So anyway, for the chart, we assume that 1,000. We will just assume that. Okay, so if I give you, if I tell you in the test 100, then you, the assumption is, oh, not assumption because I gave you the test, but if I gave you this and it's just around less than 100 or less than 500, you will be the judge. Okay, so what will be this number minus yes or this number minus no? Okay, so again, the formula is this 1000 minus the yes answer. And then same thing with the no. This is equals to 1,000 minus the number of people who answered no. So J2, J2. Press enter, copy and paste, copy and paste. Okay, and then the gap. The gap is 350. So just refer again to that PowerPoint. Okay, copy and paste. All throughout is 350. Why is it 350? So if you're going to check out the PowerPoint presentation. Okay, let me share it to you again, the PowerPoint. Okay, if you're going to check out again this PowerPoint presentation, you can see that the gap is 350. So why is it 350? Because by assumption, let's go back to the final result, okay? By assumption, the gap, this is assumption again, the gap is just half of the highest number. Since I cannot figure out which one is the highest number here, 693, 741, so I, I assume that the highest number is around 700 to 750. 741. So divided by two and then round it off to 350. Actually, it does it. Uh, uh, it's we're not stick here. If you want 300, that will be a little uh, steep, steeper. Um, yeah, steeper. Okay, sorry, smaller. Okay, in wide. Uh, and then uh, if you want 400, it will be bigger. So 
wide. So it uh, 400 will not be good. It's around 350 or 300. You can use that. Okay. So I'm going to continue with the next um, uh, the, this uh, chart on the next video. I just need to make our um, uh, videos smaller or shorter in the time or shorter in minutes. Okay, I'll see you.